peace be with you. This is Ben Thompson with the Free Citizens America. Today we're going to continue our study of the Torah. And we're going to look at how the Constitution and the Torah are related and that the, the path that America is on now is entirely wrong path and everything we need to know is contained within the Torah. My mom and I were talking about this yesterday, and I said to her that the Torah really does contain everything. And that was something that I know my mom had said, basically that the Torah teaches us how to live. And it really is true. There, I, it's like I'm reading the Torah for the first time. Because I've read it, I've read it many times before, but I am seeing things that I have never ever seen before. Nor would I have even thought that it would contain. But before we get started, I want to backtrack a little bit because I I had a, a new thought on something from previous, and so that's where. We were talking about how the city planning that was architecture for as one of the acceptable labor fields that the Lord has given. And after thinking more about that, I disagree that it was talking about meant architecture. I was thinking city as in the planning of buildings. But I think it's referring to city as in city planning for governance. A, a system of, of a leading... And so that's more what I'm thinking about now. And I think I missed talking about carpentry. Whereas Noah was constructed in the art of carpentry. And so that leaves us with agriculture, uh, government, animal husbandry, uh, mu mu musician, and carpentry. So now that we've clarified that, let's go ahead and move on. We are in Genesis chapter 7, and We, of course, we are using the King James Version, and please feel free to read along. And I always suggest having a marker of some sort, so you can mark down key points that you want to be able to find quickly. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean, by two the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air by sevens the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. There went in two and two unto Noah, into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. So this ark, it was, it's believed to be box in shape. But the, the point we need to look at is not necessarily the ark, what does the ark represent? It was the means of temporal salvation for the earth. 
Now, Jesus Christ came in the meridian of time and gave us uh, the ability to become spiritually saved as well as physically saved through the resurrection. But the Lord is going to have to do another temporal salvation in the last days. So there's a temporal salvation, a spiritual salvation, then there are going to be another temporal salvation. And that temporal salvation in the last days uh, will be through the cleansing of the earth and making it into a new earth and new heaven. And so the, the Lord will help us to provide a way to be able to receive this temporal salvation. And that is only found through the, the Torah, basically. If you, the, the teachings in the Torah are like the Ark. Noah had the Ark and it saved him from the floods. We have the Torah and it will save us from the fire. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. And the waters prevailed, and were greatly, and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl, and of cattle, and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, and all that was in the dry land died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive. And they that were with him in the ark, and the waters prevailed upon the earth in hundred and fifty days. So let's pause right there and think. Why is this important to America and the Constitution? And then let me try to explain it. Uh, this story about Noah is about what happens to a people that have rejected everything that God gave them. Which we are doing now. So, we are like in the days of Noah. The Lord is sending us warnings, and if we don't heed those warnings, then there's going to be a traumatic event that is going to come to bring about the work of desolation. In Noah's day, it was the flood that brought the desolation, but through that desolation, it provided a, a salvation for Noah and his his three sons and all their wives and their children from so on and because of that we are all the descendants of Noah now Noah and his three sons and their wives they re they rejected the worldly thinking and held to the spiritual thinking that the, the Lord wanted them to have so I ask you will you hold to the spiritual thinking and reject the worldly thinking. Remember what Jesus said. 
the 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 world hateth light, which is truth, and loves darkness. And so that means that everything that the world teaches is false, even if it sounds good. It is a false teaching. You and I need to reject this worldly teaching and to look only towards spiritual teaching. The Constitution is a spiritual teaching on how governments ought to run. The Torah is a spiritual teaching on how man and society is to live. Now, some may say, what can I do? Because I know that's the, probably the biggest question people ask me, what can I do? There's three things that we all need to do. The first thing is that we need to learn what these two spiritual teachings are in the Torah. And if you're watching this, that's what you're doing right now. The second thing we need to do is live by those spiritual teachings. Live as much as we can as we grow, grow deeper into tyranny it'll become harder and harder but we need to cling to those spiritual truths the third thing we need to do is to warn our neighbor warn as many people as will hear us and if somebody doesn't want to hear they just want to argue just move on and move on to the next person we don't have much time one way you can do this is to make videos. I would highly encourage you to make videos teaching the Torah or showing how the Torah needs to be lived in our society and what and how to what principles the world has and what principles the Torah has. If you do not have time to do that, you may feel free to copy any of the videos that the Free Citizens of America has to offer. Most of them are uh, can be remixed and put directly to your YouTube channel. Although it'll be better if you yourself do it with your own mouth. That way, we have more people teaching the same thing. But if you don't, if you don't have time, uh, please feel free to copy any video of the Free Citizens of America and use it for your own purposes in uh, spreading the truth of the Torah and the Constitution. So let's uh, move on. This is Genesis chapter 8. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained, and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the hundred and fifty cute days, the waters were abated, and the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventh day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat, and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month, and the tenth month on the first day of the month were the tops of the mountains seen, and it came to pass at the end of forty days and Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were also were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark. The waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand, and took her, and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days, and he and again he set forth a dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days, and sent forth a dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundredth and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seven and twentieth day of the month, 
was the earth dried, and God spake unto unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing and every fowl and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kind went forth out of the ark. Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. The Lord smiled, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So that's the end of chapter 8. Let's move on to chapter 9. And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you, and the dread of you, shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air. Upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea, into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require, the hand of every beast will I require it, the hand of man and the hand of every man's brother will require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. So let's pause there. We have two ideas. This is the first time in the Bible that meat eating is mentioned. Now if if the book of Enoch was still in the Bible it would talk about that the first instance of, of eating meat was the giants that were in the land. And they ate up lots and lots of beasts, and there was lots of bloodshed. And the bloodshed among the giants, among man, among the animals, is one of the reasons for the flood. Now, um, here, God is saying that all we are allowed to eat all animals. But the idea is is not that is that God is allowing us to eat animals. It is that God wants us to be able to have the animals if we need it. It says here, and surely your blood of your lives will I require. And so, whosoever sheds blood, whether it be beast or man, their blood shall also be taken. Because it is a, think, think of it as a balance. And we are not allowed to eat blood with meat. So th that is a uh, saying that we have to spill the blood out and make sure it's drained and remove blood from meat. Now, in order to do this, meat uh, after draining the blood, meat when meat is cut up you take salt and put it over and that absorbs the blood out of the meat and the heavy salt use actually purifies the meat from parasites and then you cook it getting rid of, of parasites even further when the Lord gives us I, things pertaining to food it's not really talking about spiritual matters 
is about talking temporal health of the body. Now the second part is talking about murderers and so that says that we are supposed to have the death penalty. If you believe in the Bible you believe in the death penalty for murderers because it says whoever sheds blood must have their blood shed. And as I said before that's talking about a balance. There's a balance in the earth and if somebody sheds blood that bounces out of whack. So you have to take the blood of that person that, that killed that person and that's the only way to equal out the blood. It doesn't matter what the world's philosophy is on on executions, that's what the Lord says and that's what we need to do. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, Now behold, and I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you of the fowl of the cattle and of every beast of the earth with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth, and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh, and the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, and I that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and upon every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years. And all the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. Now, this brings us to our next labor field that I, I keep talking about. The reason I keep talking about it is because I'm trying to understand it. And we, we have the ag we know agriculture, the very first uh, labor field. Then we have the governance, talking about judges the way the Lord established, not talking about kings. And then the next one is animal husbandry, the, the ability to care and raise animals. Then we have a musician making instruments and playing them. And then we have carpentry. And the sixth, apparently, is being a servant. 
Now in Hebrew, the word for servant and slave are practically the same. Now we know that Abraham kept servants, and we know that that Noah uh, prophesied, saying that Canaan and his children would become servants or slaves. And we think of the idea of slavery as being a negative term. Now, slavery in itself is not negative. It is... It becomes negative when people abuse. Now, the Lord never anywhere authorized the abuse of servants and or slaves. That was never the intent of, of, of this position. Now, in the Lord's system, the, the Lord sets up two ways. One, to be able to become free from slavery and servitude. The other way is to remain a servant or slave. Now, the Torah says that when a person is a servant, they shall remain a servant. And this is talking about men. When a man is a servant, he shall remain a servant for seven years. Then on the, then on the seventh year, he is to be given a choice. He may become free, or he may remain a servant slash slave. Now, the reason for this choice is because some people want to be free and some people want to remain slaves or servants. Both passes of, uh, uh, paths are acceptable to the Lord. Some people are happier being free, some people are happier being servants. The point is they are given the choice after seven years. Is this the life you like? Do you want to continue or do you want to be free? Now, the man who chooses freedom, he goes off and he's free. And he may do whatever he chooses. For those who uh, like their servitude, enjoy being in that, they are to have, they are to be taken to the doorpost before the judges and have an all bore through their ear to show that they have chosen servitude for their life. Remember how I said that the world looks upon everything and corrupts it and only likes what is wrong. The world says slavery is wrong. Now the Lord says that is not necessarily the case. Abuse is wrong. There was never ever any instance to abuse slavery. In fact, the Lord set up a system in the Torah that if a person was abused, then they were to be beaten. The, the master was to be beaten. And if the servant was, or slave was disfigured, then he was to gain automatic freedom because of that. So there is no way the Lord has ever condoned abuse of slavery. Now, what makes a slave? A slave is a person who works to only receive what they need to live, basically. Now, think about the world today. A lot of people are working and only making enough money to live day to day. They don't grow, and that is slavery. So we still have slavery. They're only deceived into thinking they're free. Now, there is no freedom for those people, just like there was no freedom for the African slaves, and in other slaves there's no freedom because people do not keep the Torah. On the seventh year, a slave or servant is supposed to be given the choice to be free or to remain a slave. 
We are not given that choice in America today. If we are poor, we are kept under financial bondage. If you are only making enough money to live day to day, you are in financial bondage. If you are wealthy and you are paying um, off large debts due to schooling, that is another form of financial bondage. The Lord even said that in the year of Jubilee, debts would be forgiven, which again we are not keeping. So let's let's think about this through this week. And we learned that desolation provides a means to restart society for the good. The Lord will provide a way to save us if we will listen. The Torah is the means of salvation in our day, our temporal salvation. Only through Christ can we receive spiritual salvation. And we learned the laws for shedding blood. And we learned that about slavery. So these are the principles which America was built upon. America rejected it on both sides and we are we are about to face the desolation and I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.